All right, hold on to your salmon bellies because we've got controversy about supplements and nutraceuticals again with mainstream medicine trying to make natural health products look dangerous uh, because God forbid there could be dietary and lifestyle and nutraceutical and botanical interventions that might when used appropriately and prescribed by a knowledgeable healthcare provider be safe, effective and all right, you can't patent that shit. So that's why we don't get a lot of that news. But seriously, guys, if you are taking any supplements, you probably already know that omega-3 fatty acids, uh, specifically those derived from fish oil, so EPA and DHA are what we're talking about here specifically. Uh, these are some of the most basic, most important, most science-based and evidence-informed and likely beneficial nutraceuticals for your long-term health span. And we've talked, there's tons of research on that. Um, in fact, fish oils are amongst the most researched nutraceutical. Uh, there is more research on EPA and DHA than there are uh, for most medications and pharmaceuticals out there. But wait, sometimes science likes to screw with our heads. A new study in the Journal of Circulation, uh, a systematic review and meta-analysis, this is the strongest form of evidence-based research we have in modern science, um, this study is, or meta-analysis, is reporting now that fish oils and omega-3 fatty acid supplementation is correlated with atrial fibrillation, an arrhythmia that it's related to blood clots in the heart, uh, stroke, uh, heart failure, and other heart-related complications. So, oh shit, fish oil, sorry, it's actually bad for you and we shouldn't take it as a supplement, right? Well, let's make sure that we are clear on the science around that. Now, if you are a self-proclaimed biohacker, or if you know enough to be talking and researching about health span instead of longevity, or you're just looking for ways to be the best version of yourself and have your brain and body functioning at the peak of their capacity, if you wanna do that in an evidence-informed and science-based way, but integrative and holistic manner, uh, you should probably hit that subscribe button because that's my jam. Uh, I'm here to share my 16 years of experience in precision medicine and functional genetics. As a coach, as a naturopathic doctor, as a dad uh, licensed here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. But okay, let's just hold on for a second. If there is one thing that I have learned in my 16 years of practice, it's that mainstream media doesn't know how to interpret science. Sorry. And if there's another thing that I've learned is uh, it's that peer reviewed journals still have bias and an agenda behind them. So if you actually read the study and the results instead of just reading the conclusions, sometimes you're going to find a different story than what's actually presented in the media. In this particular case, the study, the meta-analysis research article that we're all talking about was published in a peer reviewed journal. As I mentioned, it's called Circulation, Volume 44, Number 25. In total, the research article included over 81,000 patients across seven different clinical trials uh, with an average follow-up time period, uh, follow-up period of five years, which is quite fantastic when it comes to dietary interventions, you know, that we can track and follow up on patients for that long and that we're looking at those ki that kind of research in medicine. That's good science. That's good medicine. Um, and that's how we learn things like perhaps that maybe fish oils might actually cause arrhythmia or atrial fibrillation specifically. Um, but to actually be evidence informed rather than just evidence based and blindly following the conclusions of uh, the writers of that uh, particular research article, that means thinking with your brain and applying clinical research data to an individual person, typically to yourself. Um, so if, what we need to be thinking is, what's the likelihood that this science, this article that I'm reading, this meta-analysis that I'm reading in this particular case, is relevant to me. For instance, if you are listening to this or watching this video and you're 30 years old, you're a 30 year old healthy adult, does the fact that this meta-analysis included a population that was on average about 65 years old, does that make you feel any different about whether or not the results are actually applicable to you? Um, does that give you any pause when you're thinking about uh, this whole fish oil debacle? Out of the seven studies included in this meta-analysis, Two had an average patient age of 62 or 63 years old, two uh, about 64 years old, and the rest of them from 65 all the way up to 75 years old as the average age. Oh, and by the way, atrial fibrillation and arrhythmias are actually a lot more common as are hospitalizations for arrhythmia and uh, atrial fibrillation specifically 
for people in general as we age, specifically over the age of 65 years old. Now, before this meta-analysis, one criticism, criticism I had about some of the other studies that have been held up in social media to vilify fish oils and omega-3s for atrial fibrillation and arrhythmia specifically were just shitty studies in terms of scientific method, um, which is why this meta-analysis excluded them and only focused on the good science, the good studies that were out there. Seven solid studies um, that met a rigorous qualifying standard. Uh, and a lot of these other studies that were excluded, I wanted to mention, were studies that only saw the effect of atrial fibrillation associated with doses of fish oil over four grams per day. That's a lot of fish oil. For most retail brands of fish oil, that's going to be at least three, if not six, or even 10 capsules per day for a lot of the cheaper versions of the fish oils that you might find out there in your grocery store or the supermarket. Um, or if it's a liquid fish oil that you're using well over two teaspoons of liquid uh, fish oil, probably. Uh, typical fish oil dosage uh, is in the neighborhood of around 800 to 1,000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA, especially when we're thinking about cardiovascular disease and heart disease prevention. Um, so just to give, give an idea of you know, how, much, how much more fish oil we're talking about in these studies that was associated with atrial fibrillation. But this meta-analysis, to be clear, did include several studies that used an intervention arm that only used about one gram of EPA and DHA combined in those studies. Um, so they're reasonably therapeutic dosage. Uh, across the seven studies that they looked at, uh, the incidence of atrial fibrillation was overall, on average, across all seven studies, 1.3% per year, or a little more than one in, one uh, one in 100 uh, people who took fish whales in these studies um, and all of these people being over 65 years old as well. Again, we want to make sure we're applying science to the specific person that we are uh, working with or thinking about uh, applying this information to. And so it's relevant to know that the population of these studies was well into their 60s, if not into their 70s. Okay, but wait, five of these seven studies, including the one study that the authors in their discussion were like, this is the main article. We want you to focus on this one because it's the best study out of all of the seven studies we've included. They clearly, these five studies out of seven, clearly indicated no difference between the intervention arm being given fish oil in this case, compared to the control arm. Let's just call that a placebo. In the studies, the control arm varied from olive oil to mineral oil uh, and other types of oils as well. For those of you who are more familiar with statistics in medicine, the confidence interval at 95% cross one, which generally statistically means that there is no difference between the two arms of the study. So no difference between placebo and fish oil in these particular cases. The two studies that did have a confidence interval favoring the, ha the increased hazard or risk ratio uh, meaning the two studies that showed um, a dangerous effect of fish oil in this particular case associated with atrial fibrillation. Uh, they were the two smallest studies out of the seven. And they were the two studies that also happened to use doses of fish oil over four grams per day of combined EP EPA and DHA. Again, that's two to four times more fish oil than I typically recommend for 95% of my patients. If you really pool, if you really want to pool all of this data together in the dosage uh, or uh, the dosage from the studies uh, should really all be standardized, ideally. So really, we should be removing the four gram studies and having a separate meta analysis there for that dosage and comparing all the state or pooling all the uh, uh, studies that have the one gram doses together and excluding the four gram ones. The low N here, or the number of people in these two studies with very high dosing, skewed the meta-analysis results. And so this even kind of stinks of cherry-picking studies to try to make a point. And that's why uh, there was a lot of sarcasm in my voice when I introduced this video today, um, because it's really easy to make a study and make the statistics, statistics represent something that you're trying uh, to promote if you cherry pick the data. Um, and so this is a case where you can't really refute that because the dosing for the two studies that happen to be the lowest N and the ones that if you remove them, then there's clearly no effect. Um, they're just thrown in there in order to make this look bad. Uh, they really stick out as two studies that are vastly and fundamentally different from the other studies. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention almost that all of these studies that were included in this meta-analysis were being done, sorry, all but one, I believe, uh, were being done between 2019 to 2021. 
What else has been going on in that period of time? We've been dealing with a global pandemic, seeing unprecedented levels of perceived stress and workplace burnout, anxiety, and depression. And all of these things increase the likelihood of atrial fibrillation. Um, and in most countries in the world, we are undergoing mass vaccinations for COVID-19, a virus which itself and its vaccines have both been linked with heart issues like arrhythmias. So this is an example of how science and evidence-based information, evidence-based, can be used to sway opinion due to people's laziness, um, their laziness to read, to learn, to interpret scientific data appropriately, and generally think with their brains, um, and instead are generalized to suggest that there is always a black and white answer of whether something is good or bad as a potential treatment. Um, it's also, quite frankly, in my personal opinion, an example, this is an example, of a really poorly written or perhaps even clearly biased conclusion to what is otherwise a fairly good piece of scientific literature. So does this meta-analysis raise my eyebrows about atrial fibrillation and high-dose fish oil? Yes, it does, especially for patients in their mid-60s and onward, especially when we're talking about doses of four grams or higher. Does that science actually prove cause and effect here, though? No, it doesn't. And it's much less concerning for patients that are younger than that general age. And from the science that is out there, I'll, I'll agree, and I will agree with caution or even contraindication of high dose fish oil above four grams per day of combined EPA and DHA in general. Um, and it, I've, sub, I've consciously made this adjustment in my practice, but at therapeutic, at standard therapeutic doses in healthy younger populations, fish oil remains a supplement that can be very important and fundamental uh, to strategic individualized and precision medicine diets, especially when it's combined with functional genetics and comprehensive blood work to determine priority and leveraged opportunities uh, for optimizing health. Um, fish oil is still a really important one. Now, as always, before you take any supplements or nutraceuticals uh, or medications for that matter, uh, be sure to consult with your licensed and uh, experienced healthcare practitioner because even natural health products like fish oils may not always be safe for everyone to take. Uh, they can be dangerous. They need to be considered in your own individual context and in combination with your other treatments, your other supplements and your medications, of course. Bottom line, a meta-analysis suggested a link between fish oil consumption and atrial fibrillation. But the only studies that have actually shown this effect so far anywhere in the science have been with dosing of fish oil over four grams of combined EPA and DHA, and only in populations uh, well into their mid-60s or older. Fish oil statistically has not been shown to cause atrial fibrillation or arrhythmia in doses below four grams per day, and is still one of the most and best studied health, medical, and wellness treatments ever studied. And that includes a lot of pharmaceuticals as well. So listen, do you have an opinion on this? Come at me. I'm happy to debate. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking out there. In the meantime, keep being awesome. Hope you learned something today about science and how we can use science well or how we can use it like idiots.